Summary of the Shack by William P. Young Willie, who is telling the story, introduces Mackenzie Allen Phillips, who is his friend. Mac had a hard childhood because his alcoholic and angry father scared Mac and his family. Mac still has trouble getting rid of those memories as an adult, but he is happy with his wife Nan and their five kids. It's snowing when the main story starts. From his home office, Mac looks out at the snow, but the beauty of nature can't make him feel better. He calls his sadness the Great Sadness. A note signed Papa tells Mac to come to the shack next weekend when he checks his mailbox. Mac feels angry and scared about it. Nan calls to say she's afraid about Kate, the couple's oldest daughter, who hasn't been talking to them much. Nan says she is asking Papa, which is her pet name for God, for help. Mac took his six-year-old children, Kate, Josh, and Missy, on a camping trip three years ago. The family stopped at Multnomah Falls on the way, where Mac told Missy a favorite story. An American Indian girl gives up her life by jumping off a cliff in the story so that her tribe can be saved. Later that night, Missy tells Mac that the story makes her think of Jesus. She also asks God if he will ever tell her to jump off a cliff to save her family. Mac tells her, you'll never have to do anything like that again, which makes her cry. Everything goes well until the last morning, when Josh and Kate go to play in a boat. Mac looks on as Missy paints at a camp table. Kate waves at Mac from the canoe, but it flips over and traps Josh below. While Mac is running to help his son, he quickly loses his happiness when he sees that Missy is gone. In the back of a truck, Mac heard the crying of a little girl, and that passenger told Mac about it. Police show up, and Tommy Dalton, one of them, goes with Mac to check out the campsite. The pin has the same signature as a note left by a serial killer known as Little Lady Killer. The next day, the truck is seen near a national park, and Mac helps the police search the area. Sam asks Mac to name something in a broken-down shack. Mac starts to cry when he sees the object, it's Missy's bloody and torn dress. Right now, it's been hard for the family to get over Missy's death. Kate has pulled away, and Mac feels like he's getting farther away from God. When Nan says she might take the kids to see her family, Mac jumps at the chance to go to the shack by himself. He can't stop thinking about the note in the mailbox. Mac takes Willie's truck and heads into the woods. When he walks into the sad shack, he breaks down when he sees the bloodstain on the floor. He is sick and stressed out. As soon as he leaves the house, the forest around him changes and blooms with springtime life. When he turns around, the shack has been turned into a lovely house by a lake. When he gets close, an African-American woman opens the door and says her name is Papa. Behind her are a short Asian woman called Sereu and a guy from the Middle East who says his name is Jesus. They tell Mac that the three of them together are God, which makes some kind of sense. Mac talks to Papa inside while she makes dinner. She tells him that she loves him and that God is always with him. Mac and the three parts of God have dinner together and talk about Mac's family and how important it is for relationships to be based on love and respect instead of power and order. Papa leads a prayer service after the meal. Mac is surprised that there is no reading from the Bible or any other formality. Instead, it is just a time for Jesus to tell Papa how much he loves him. Jesus tells them after the meal that Papa is the Creator God, Jesus is her son in human form, and Sereu is the Holy Spirit. Mac has a bad dream about Missy that night. When he wakes up, he asks Papa if she ever spanks her kids, but she says that's not how she is. Soraya takes Mac out into a beautiful yard after breakfast, where they clear out a patch of flowers together. While they work, Soraya talks to Mac about good and evil and warns him that judging others unfairly based on your own ideas of what is right and wrong is dangerous. God should be the one to judge, not people. After that, Mac goes to have lunch with Jesus on a walk. When Jesus tells Mac to walk across the lake, Mac is startled. But with a little help, he goes across without any trouble with Jesus by his side. Jesus talks about the dangers of relationships based on rank again while they eat. 
He tells Mac that someone is waiting for him down a road next to a waterfall. Mac goes down the road and into a big cave. A tall, serious woman stands behind a desk inside. She tells Mac that he is there to judge, but not himself, but God and everyone else. The woman asks Mac if God is to blame for what happened, which makes him angry by telling him of the person who killed his daughter. Mac, who is sad and hurt, says that God is to blame. The woman tells Mac that if he judges God, then he judges everyone else too. Now she tries to get Mac to pick just two of his five kids to go to heaven with God, but he won't do it. The woman says that giving Mac this choice helps him understand Papa better. She also says that bad things that happen, like Missy's death, are not part of God's plan, but happen because people choose to be independent instead of liking and believing God. Give up your right to decide and your freedom and believe in God. This will fix the world. Mac hears kids laughing all of a sudden. He can see all of his children, including Missy, playing with Jesus by the lake when one wall of the tunnel opens up. The kids can't see or hear him, but Missy knows he's there because she runs over to sign I love you and kiss him. As Missy goes back to the other kids, a waterfall falls in front of Mac and blocks his view. Mac understands that the great sadness is over as he walks back to the lake. When he meets Jesus, Jesus tells him that the woman in the cave was Sophia, who stands for Papa's wisdom. Jesus tells Missy that he, Papa, and Saray were with her the whole time because God never really leaves anyone. He also tells Mac that the church as he knows it is just a group of people running a business that stands between Jesus and his followers. Mac meets Papa on the porch to talk and eat some fresh cookies. Mac asks Papa if Missy had to die so that he could teach him about the waterfall and the story of the Multnomah princess. Father is upset and tells her that just because she can find meaning and good in terrible things doesn't mean she causes them. She also says Mac lied to Nan about going to the shack because he doesn't want to deal with his feelings. Mac goes out on the lake in a boat to think about this. Soraya shows up in the boat and tells Mac to have dinner at the house. She informs him that feelings, whether good or bad, are important to fully experience everything that life has to give. She tells Mac not to hide his feelings but to think about where they came from instead. Soraya tells us over dinner that people follow rules, laws, and commandments to feel independent and in charge, and also to judge each other. Soraya puts his hand on Mac's eyes after the meal to let him see like the other three. When Mac opens his eyes, he is on a small hill with a view of a clearing. Every living thing gives off light that shines on the world. A circle of children sparkles with inner white light fills the open. Next comes a circle of adults shining with more complex colors, and finally a circle of angels shining in blue. One person's light changes quickly. Soraya tells them that the man is Mac's father and that the different colored lights show different feelings. Mac is moved to tears and runs to him. They hug and forgive each other. Jesus comes out and meets each person in the crowd individually. The next morning, Mac wakes up to find Papa, who is changed into a guy with a silver hairstyle. Papa makes Mac breakfast. Mac is given a tightly rolled mat by Sarayu that is full of flowers and herbs from the yard. Mac and Papa start to walk through the woods along a road marked by a red line drawn on some rocks and trees. When they get to an area, Papa tells Mac that he needs to forgive the person who killed Missy in order to stop hurting. Mac tells the killer out loud that he forgives them through tears. After that, Papa takes Mac into the cave marked by the red circle. Inside, they find Missy's body lying on a sheet. She smells good, so Mac wraps her in Sereo's mat, and they go back to the cabin. There, Jesus shows Mac the beautiful box he has made for Missy, which has pictures of her with her family on it. After putting Missy in the box with care, they take it to the spot in the yard that Mac and Sereo cleaned up the day before. Inside, Papa tells Mac that he can stay in the house and continue to learn from God, or he can go back to his normal life. He can choose to keep making the world a better place by being kind if he goes back home, Soraya says. Mac makes the choice to return. Soraya also says that Kate thinks she killed Missy. 
Mac hopes that this will help him get back in touch with Kate and start the healing process. Mac falls asleep on the floor of the house after putting on his old clothes. When he wakes up, he is back in the broken down shack and God is not there. He's excited to put what he learned over the weekend to use. But on the way home, another driver hits Mac's car. He is taken by helicopter to a nearby hospital, where he slowly wakes up and falls asleep over the next few days. Willie comes over as Mac is getting clearer and asks about the shack. When Mac thinks about everything that has happened, he quickly tells Nan everything. He calls Kate over to his bed to tell her she is not to blame for Missy's death. Kate is clearly upset, but she also looks pleased. After about a month, Mac, Nan, and Tommy Dalton go to the area near the house. Toy doesn't believe Mac's crazy story until he shows them where Missy's body is in the cave. As soon as experts get to the scene of the crime, they have enough proof to find and arrest the serial killer who killed Missy. Willie says in the afterward that Mac has changed a lot since the weekend he spent at the shack. Mac is quick to love and forget now that the great sadness is over. His hope is for everyone to have the opportunity to connect with Jesus, Sereo, and Papa. About the author Henry William Young was born on May 11, 1955, in Grande Prairie, Alberta, Canada. Young's parents were missionaries in the mountains of New Guinea, where he lived with them for the first 10 years of his life. There, he became friendly with the Danny, who were a local group of people. Young thought of the Danny as a second family because they taught him their language and let him stay in their homes. Young went to boarding school when he was six years old and then moved around schools in Western Canada for the rest of his schooling. However, his early years in New Guinea were very important to him. After that, Young went to Bible college and got his first degree in religion. While Young worked in churches, building companies, insurance companies, food processing plants, and other places, he never imagined himself as a full-time artist. He wrote The Shack one year as a present for his six kids for Christmas. Friends thought the book had promise and told him to print it himself. A short time later, the book shot to the top of the New York Times bestseller list. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.